Hi, my name is Dr. Ogunela Adiola, and this is my project with the Institute of Gender and the Economy. It's called From Boardroom to Playroom, Challenges of Working Mothers in Nigerian Corporations. Enjoy. This project is dedicated to my late mother, Mrs. Bolanle Ogunela. My model of a working mother, my biggest inspiration, and the most incredible human I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. And this is what the content looks like. My first glimpse into the life of a working Nigerian mother was observing my mother here. She was a top banking executive, a lawyer, and the mother of five children. I know, that's a lot. <laughs> I marveled at how she did it all. As I grew older, I became familiar with the struggles, the daily strife to balance work and motherhood, the pressure to constantly rise to the occasion as a professional, the need for her to be a present mother and wife, the importance of self-care, all while dealing with the never-ending demands of Nigeria's patriarchal society. This picture is replicated among millions of women who work in Nigerian corporations. They are pulled in countless directions while bearing the weight of a society that sees them as less than. While every working Nigerian mother's experience is unique, the struggles are similar largely because of the demands the Nigerian society places on us. Working mothers in Nigeria, such as Folake with the thought bubble here, face at least one of the challenges such as time and resource constraints or postpartum depression or any of the many challenges that we'll delve into. These challenges are complicated by the fact that Nigeria is a deeply patriarchal country. To illustrate how the country performs on gender equality matters, on the Global Gender Gap Index of 2020 by the World Economic Forum, Nigeria ranked 128 out of 153 countries. And to demonstrate how tone deaf the Nigerian corporate world can be regarding gender equality matters, this slide shows an excerpt from an advert for an International Women's Day event by the Nigerian Bar Association, announcing, wait for it, a debate titled, Men are better allies in the workplace than women, true or false. Funny, isn't it? Here I was, moments after becoming a mother in October 2018. I later got back to work in December 2018, feeling a mix of emotions. Sadness for being away from my son so soon, fear of not being good at my job anymore, and nervous about what life as a working mother would be. Nothing prepared me for the challenges I faced in the months that followed. I received a sub power appraisal at the end of that year, missed out on a promotion, struggled to balance work and motherhood, and dealt with many other issues. All of this culminated in me doubting my abilities as a professional, which snowballed into imposter syndrome and eventually postpartum depression. On the road to healing, I opened up to other working Nigerian mothers like me. I realized from these conversations that my challenges were not unique. We really were dealing with so much. Unfortunately, there is a culture of silence among Nigerian women, not to speak out about our struggles as women, as mothers, as working mothers, to hide our scars and put on a facade. When I started my fellowship journey with Gates, my experience and that of countless other working Nigerian mothers weighed heavy on my mind. It was important for me to ask questions regarding these challenges to understand the whys and hows, to explore the possibility of solutions, and most importantly, to break the silence and sound the alarm on the challenges we face. You should care about these challenges first because mothers form a significant portion of the workforce in Nigeria, and understanding the challenges they face can help improve their lives and results in increased productivity and retention rates for companies. Second, this project can serve as a guide to the Nigerian government to develop policies that support working mothers, thereby having a larger and more, produ more productive workforce to boost economic growth. 
Third, the public's awareness of these challenges could enlighten them as they impact the economy and the society at large and promote diversity and inclusion in the workplace, building a reality where working mothers are valued and supported. And then non-Nigerians can learn from the experiences of working mothers in Nigeria to help identify areas for improvement in existing policies and programs and address the specific challenges faced by working mothers in different countries and contexts. How did I conduct my research? When pondering on how to research my topic, what I considered most important was hearing firsthand the accounts of mothers who work or worked in Nigerian corporations. I spent a week carrying out research online on the existing published works pertaining to these challenges, you know, to see what questions had already been answered and what needed answering. Then I proceeded to conducting a few preliminary interviews of working mothers to get an idea of what their experiences were and what deep dive questions to ask. I thereafter commenced semi-structured in-depth interviews at the start of November 2022, which ran on until the end of January 2023. I also conducted thorough research on existing published reports, articles, and news related to my topic, and went through labor, maternal, and gender laws in Nigeria and other countries, including Canada, United States, and United Kingdom. I spent February 2023 collating insights from my interviews and data from my desk research. In synthesizing my interview insights, I went through my interview notes and recordings, observed patterns and themes, and documented the trends and highlights. And in March, I worked on presenting my interview and desk research findings and iterating to the final output you are reading and listening to right now. In terms of how I did my interviews or who I interviewed more like, I interviewed mothers in their thirties who were currently working or had worked in Nigerian corporations. I interviewed 24 working mothers who were or who had worked in Nigerian corporations as mothers and interviewed five employers to get their perspective on these challenges. For the mothers I interviewed, it was important for me to have a spread across the number of children they have, the year of their first child's birth, the industries they work or worked in, their company size, and their levels in the companies. They have between one and three children and became mothers as recently as 2020 or as long ago as 2002. They work or worked in a total of 12 industries in company types from startups to multinational corporations and occupied positions from entry level to senior management. As we delve into the challenges of working mothers in Nigerian corporations, it is crucial to acknowledge the numerous challenges they face. Based on my interviews and desk research, I arrived at the top three challenges by having the mothers I interviewed rank their top three challenges. I also considered which challenges are unique to Nigerian mothers and add to existing literature related to this project. The top three challenges are, first, missed promotions and other work opportunities. Second, insufficient maternity leave. And third, lack of on-site support facilities. Now, the first top challenge. These are direct quotes from some mothers I interviewed. Mothers are faced by us in promotion and in hiring processes, with some being told outrightly that they were missing deserved promotions because they had children that year. Even worse, some mothers have been demoted for committing the unforgivable sin of birthing another human. It was December 2018. I had resumed work for maternity leave earlier that month, and as I counted down to my year-end review and appraisal, I reflected on the past year. At the start of the year, I prepared and presented the company's bid submission for a highly coveted contract which we won. I closed out other transactions through the year, including working through half of my maternity leave. The company had a great year, and I looked forward to having a great year-end conversation too. My boss called me into his office and with his stern face informed me that I would not be getting a promotion and stated that I needed to show more ownership. When I asked how, he alluded to me going on maternity leave. Yes, the same maternity leave that I voluntarily partly walked through. I was crushed. 
I worked thrice as hard the following year to ensure I was not passed over for a promotion again. I got the promotion eventually. Unfortunately, way, way too many Nigerian mothers have had similar bad experiences. While Nigeria has some laws in place to protect mothers, not only do they offer little to no protection, implementation and enforcement remain major challenges, and many Nigerian women still face discrimination in the workplace due to their status as mothers. The cultural bias against working mothers and traditional gender roles in Nigeria also contribute to this discrimination. For example, in 2006, the Nigerian government introduced the Ni National Gender Policy to align with international standards with the goal of integrating gender equality into national development plans and economic strategies. However, the guidelines for creating equal opportunities and protection for women in the workplace are rarely implemented. Also, Nigeria's Labor Act is silent on discrimination of mothers regarding promotion, recruitment, or other opportunities, although it protects mothers from being dismissed. On the other hand, United Kingdom's Equality Act, for example, prohibits discrimination on the basis of pregnancy and maternity in employment and promotions. The Canada Labor Code mandates that mothers that go on parental or maternity leave are reinstated in their former position or be given a comparable position in the same location and with the same wages and benefits. On to the second top challenge. A third of mothers I interviewed ranked insufficient maternity leave as their top challenge. Most mothers stated that a more ideal maternity leave duration will be about six months long. These are quotes from some mothers I interviewed. I found it especially interesting that one of the mothers I interviewed did not even get any maternity leave at all because it was within the first year of her employment. Jeez. The maternity leave policy of the company I worked in when I had my son was three months long, fully paid. Feeling like three months would not be enough time, I requested to add my one month annual leave to it. Both requests were granted. I commenced my leave well before my due date. And then fast forward to my first day back at work. It was the day my son turned exactly two months old. I was easily distracted at work, wondering how my very young son was doing at home and feeling guilty for leaving him at such a tender age. Spending most of the day away from my son for many weeks meant that I could not give him regular feeds. This eventually led to me getting low milk supply and the early end of breastfeeding. The right of women working in private and public organizations to maternity leave is granted by Section 54 of Nigeria's Labor Act. The Act provides for maternity leave of 12 weeks, so six weeks before and six weeks after childbirth. A woman who has been continuously employed by her employer for six months or more prior to her maternity leave will be entitled to not less than 50% of her salary. After the maternity leave has ended, a nursing mother is entitled to half an hour twice a day during her working hours to nurse her child. Three Nigerian states offer 24 weeks fully paid maternity leave for government workers, while the Federal Civil Service provides for 16 weeks fully paid maternity leave for its workers, as well as two hours off each day to breastfeed up to six months after the employee resumes duty. Canada grants up to 18 months maternity leave with 55% of earnings for 12 months, so max $650 per week, or 33% of earnings for 18 months, max $390 per week. The US gives up to 12 weeks of maternity leave without any federally mandated pay. The United Kingdom guarantees up to 52 weeks of maternity leave with 39 weeks paid, broken into the first six weeks being 90% of average weekly earnings and the remaining 33 weeks being 172.48 pounds or 90%, whichever is lower. Now, what are my thoughts on Nigeria's maternity leave laws? First, 
There is no harmonization or uniformity between maternity laws applying to private and public sector employees. Second, there is no clarity on whether organizations may face penalties if they deny women their maternity leave rights or on what compensation women can claim when that right is denied. Then large pockets of the population, such as those in the informal sector and men, are being overlooked under the law. In practice, as shared by some interviewed mothers, many organizations have clauses in their handbook along the lines of man maternity leave is annual leave consuming. That is, you can't have annual leave the same year you have maternity leave. While Nigeria is not doing too badly compared to some countries like the US, for example, there's still room for improvement in terms of the duration and the trends. And finally, the last top challenge. The issue of on-site support facilities for working mothers is quite prevalent in Nigeria because they are rarely available. Nursing rooms for breastfeeding or pumping, daycares or creches on site. The facilities go a long way in reducing distractions and in helping mothers be more productive at work. However, we rarely have them. These are quotes from some mothers I interviewed. The company I worked in when I became a mother had no on-site facilities to support mothers. Dreading the end of my maternity leave because my son was so young, I searched for good daycares close to my office. There wasn't any. I had to hire a nanny to look after him at home and take extra measures for home security. It got me thinking about how convenient it would have been if there was a crush in my office, or at least one very close by how I would be more at ease at work and I would go feed him during my lunch break. My experience was not too far off from that of some mothers I interviewed as shown in the previous slide. I also felt the inadequacies all too well about two weeks after I got back to work from my maternity leave. That day, I became very familiar with breast engorgement. When my breasts were painfully overfilled with breast milk, because there was no lactation room for me to either pump milk or breastfeed my child. The pain was so unbearable that I immediately asked to leave work early for health reasons. In the United States, President Joe Biden signed the bipartisan Providing Urgent Maternal Protections, that is POMP, for Nursing Mothers Act in December 2022. The law requires employers to provide a place other than a bathroom that is shielded from view and free from intrusion from co-workers and the public, which may be used by an employee to express breast milk. In Canada, while only British Columbia and Ontario have laws that explicitly protect breastfeeding as a right, the Ontario Human Rights Commission explains that women should not have to choose between their own health or the health of their baby and their jobs housing or being able to take part in the service. In Nigeria, however, there are no federal mandates requiring employers to provide on-site support facilities for working mothers. Now let's talk about the implications. First, on mothers, apart from slow career growth and reduced earning potential, they also face mental stress like depression and anxiety as I and many others dealt with. For companies, Decreasing productivity means revenues will also take a hit. They will also deal with losing great talent, which no employer enjoys. For the economy, Nigeria especially desperately needs an economic boost now. And a tanking productivity and higher unemployment rates due to these challenges will be very bad news. You may wonder what I noticed made the difference between good and bad experiences working mothers had. While conducting my research, some themes stood out to me and which make the difference. First is the existence of company and government policies and systems and where they ex exist, what they are. Second is the cultural norms in the society which permeate into company culture. Third is empathy demonstrated by employers. The existence of policies and systems that protect and support the interests of working mothers 
are often major differentiators on the kind of experiences they end up having in the workplace. These policies and systems present themselves from two originators, companies and the government. The code bubbles issue some quotes from some mothers I interviewed. Another mother referred to a need for companies to show some design thinking when it comes to working mothers. Design thinking by companies is demonstrated by having well thought out written policies, implementing them, seeking and applying feedback from all stakeholders regarding them, and iterating the process until there is a system in place. The Nigerian government, specifically the legislature and executive, provide critical framework for the policies and systems that companies must follow for the well-being of working mothers. These policy areas include parental leave, child care support, um, legal protections against discrimination, and many more. The key takeaway here is that in Nigeria, working mothers often face a disheartening reality. Company and government policies, along with entrenched systems, fail to provide the necessary support they need to balance work and family life. Regarding the second insight about culture, Nigeria's culture largely encourages the subjugation of women and cultural norms permit every setting, including the office. These norms affect career advancement, lead to discrimination, affect parental leave, work-life balance, and the Nigerian laws. In discrimination, for example, 16 interviewed mothers said they faced a maternal wall of bias where their employers held biases against them by perceiving them to be less productive, less committed, and less reliable than their male colleagues or childless female colleagues. For parental leave, an interview mother said her boss commented on how easy his mother made parent motherhood seem. Therefore, he believed maternity leave was not a stressful period at all. This is a prevalent view among Nigerians because they believe Maternity leave is a form of vacation time. Holding on to a ridiculously unrealistic picture of mothers spending months living the life, enjoying new maternal bliss, sleeping eight hours every night and hardly lifting a finger. This perspective has motivated many employers and colleagues to deny new mothers of deserving work accolades and opportunities. Most Nigerian companies either do not have any maternity paternity leave policy or have one that allows an average of one week leave. A male policy administrator in Lagos State where paternity leave is a state policy among government workers said in his experience, men are hesitant to request paternity leave because it is not a societal norm. Mothers in turn fear that their husbands will not take the paternity leave as intended, instead spend the time at home providing little to no help and expecting to be catered to themselves. For Nigerian laws, cultural bias reflects in Nigeria's abysmal legislative representation. In the recently concluded Nigerian federal elections, only 15 women out of 326 seats were elected to the Federal House of Representatives. The consequence of this grave lack of female representation is that minimal consideration of the unique challenges faced by working mothers will be had. Here we can also see quotes from interview mothers. The bottom line here is that Nigeria's patriarchal culture hinders workplace equality for women, often causing societal expectations to clash with professional goals. Roughly half of the mothers I interviewed, including the one in the quote here, mentioned the demonstration or lack of empathy by the employers as a factor that affected their experiences as working mothers. Decision makers in companies and governments who have empathy can make a significant difference in the experiences of working mothers in the following ways. First, understanding the challenges. An interviewed mother explained how the lack of empathy for challenges faced by Nigerian working mothers from employers and government officials have affected the implementation of policies and systems that are supportive and accommodating. Second, responding to individual needs. A mother I interviewed shared how in response to having health complications throughout her pregnancy, the government she worked with granted her a fully paid year-long maternity leave 
despite the company's maternity leave policy being much shorter. This demonstration of empathy significantly impacted the quality of her experience as a working mother. Third, creating a supportive culture. I feel valued and adequately supported, a mother said to me about her experience during our interview. Mothers who worked in companies that had initiatives such as employee resource groups, mentorship programs, and leadership development programs felt like the company was giving them a warm home, as another mother mentioned. Basically, male-dominated corporate leadership often fails to empathize with the unique challenges faced by working mothers in Nigeria. Okay, enough about challenges. How do we solve them? I interview Nigerian employers to get a sense of where they stand on these challenges working Nigerian mothers face and what solutions they would prefer. The following recommendations and solutions and aggregates of those suggested by the interviewed employers, by interviewed mothers and best practices from other countries and those I have observed from experience. How can we revamp policies and systems to help working mothers progress in their careers? In the short term, companies can provide clear communication about promotion and advancement opportunities, including criteria and timelines, and ensure that working mothers have equal access to these opportunities. While the government can enforce anti-discrimination laws to ensure that working mothers are not, are not passed over for promotions or other opportunities based on the agenda or family status. Midterm, companies can put policies in place to ensure that mothers have access to equal opportunities for promotions and professional development within the company. For example, they can introduce a performance evaluation system for mothers who go on maternity leave, which grades their prior year's performance along with their performance within the six to nine months they are in the office in the current year. While the government can implement policies that promote gender equality in the workplace, such as mandatory quotas for women in leadership positions and gender pay parity legislation. Long term, companies can provide opportunities for job sharing and part time work to help working mothers balance their work and childcare responsibilities over the long term. Now, to recommendations for revamping policies and systems for better maternity leave experiences. Short term, companies can offer unpaid leave options beyond the statutory minimum of 12 weeks to allow mothers more time to bond with their babies and recover from childbirth. While the government can lay out and enforce strict penalties on companies if they deny women their maternity leave rights and provide clarity on compensation women can claim when these rights are denied. Midterm, as the company grows, they can offer paid extended maternity leave options for up to six months. They can also provide paid parental leave for both mothers and fathers to encourage more equal sharing of childcare responsibilities. While the government can amend the Labor Act to extend maternity leave duration to six months or 24 weeks, fully or par partly paid, they can also harmonize maternity laws applying to private and public sector employees to ensure uniformity. For these recommendations, short term, companies can set up on-site lactation rooms for nursing mothers to express milk and store it safely. It could be a very simple setup with a fridge which gives women privacy to pump or breastfeed. Midterm, companies can provide on-site childcare facilities or partner with a nearby daycare to offer working mothers access to affordable and reliable childcare. While the government can establish a government-run childcare support program to provide affordable and reliable childcare options for working mothers. Long term, the government can establish universal child care and early childhood education programs to support working mothers and their families. For the three identified top challenges, a long term solution is to increase female legislative representation from the current level of around 5% to around 50%. More representation by women will translate to legally backed solutions to adequately challenge the unique challenges that working mothers face. Let's talk about cultural evolution recommendations. For the first one, short term, provide training to managers and supervisors on the benefits of gender diversity in the workplace and the impact of cultural bias on their decision-making processes. 
Midterm, incentivize managers and supervisors to promote diversity in their teams by linking diversity targets to performance appraisals and rewards. Next is cultural evolution recommendations for better maternity leave experiences. Short term, we need to create awareness campaigns that educate employers and colleagues on the physical and emotional demands of pregnancy and motherhood and the importance of maternity leave. And in the long term, create a culture where working mothers feel supported in their roles as both caregivers and employees. For the final cultural evolution recommendations, short term, we can create awareness campaigns that educate employers and colleagues on the ch challenges faced by working mothers and the importance of on-site support facilities. The long-term goal is to establish a culture of inclusion and diversity within the company, where working mothers feel valued and supported. Now, how do we promote empathy in the corporate environment? Interview mothers who had experience working in both Nigeria and a country in the Western world, such as Canada and the United States and the United Kingdom highlighted a major difference between their experience in Nigeria and its Western con con counterparts, being that employers in the latter demonstrated more empathy and understanding. To this end, the following solutions can be implemented. First, companies can provide empathy training for their staff, especially decision makers and human resource personnel, to understand the unique challenges that working mothers face in the workplace. This will enable them to offer the necessary support and accommodations that working mothers need. Second, flexibility and individualization. Companies can demonstrate empathy by being flexible and providing individualized support to their employees who are mothers. An individualized support example is, is the interviewed mother who shared how the company she worked with granted her a fully paid year long maternity leave despite the company's maternity leave policy being much shorter in response to her having health complications throughout her pregnancy. Third is empathy as a core value. Companies can make empathy a core value of their company by integrating it into their company culture and policies. Employers can prioritize empathy by considering the impact of their decisions on mothers and ensuring that they provide support and accommodations that prioritize the well-being of mothers. There are however potential drawbacks to implementing the recommendations I propose. First is cost. Providing on-site support facilities, paid parental leave, extending maternity leave and other support may be costly for employers, especially small businesses. The government may also struggle to fund programs and policies aimed at supporting working mothers, given the competing needs of other sectors. Second is implementation. While the solutions are good in theory, implementing them may be difficult, especially in a country like Nigeria with a weak enforcement mechanism. There is a risk that employers and the government may not enforce these solutions effectively. Third is cultural barriers. Cultural norms and biases are difficult to shake off and may limit the success of these recommendations and solutions. There is a possibility that managers and colleagues may not support or respect the needs of working mothers. For instance, men may not support the idea of paternity leave. Fourth, fourth is limited scope. The, recommend, the recommendations may not address the needs of all working mothers, especially those in the informal sector who may not have access to benefits and support available to formal sector workers. Finally, is resistance to change. Change is hard and there may be resistance to the proposed recommendations, both from employers and employees. There's a risk that people may not see the value of these changes or they may prefer the status quo. Regardless of potential drawbacks, we should still try to implement these recommendations because of the outcomes that we can expect from implementing them. For mothers, we can expect quicker career progression through increased access to promotions and professional development opportunities, improved mental and physical health, and a sense of support and belonging in the workplace. For companies, we can expect higher employee retention rates, increased productivity and efficiency, 
and a strengthened reputation and brand image. For the economy, we can see gains in participation of women in the workforce, higher economic output due to increased productivity and efficiency, increased tax revenue due to higher employment and economic output, and improved perception of Nigeria as a modern and progressive society. So what does it all mean? As I embarked on this journey to explore the challenges faced by working Nigerian mothers, I knew it would be daunting. However, what I discovered was far beyond what I had imagined. I not only found mothers who shared similar struggles as myself, but I found a community of resilient, hardworking women who were determined to thrive despite the obstacles placed in their path. Through countless interviews and a thorough analysis, I un uncovered the top challenges faced by these mothers and proposed solutions to make their lives easier. Yet, this is only the beginning. Empowering working mothers is not just a women's issue. It is an economic issue and a human rights issue. We must continue to push, push for change and ensure that working mothers have the support and resources they need to succeed, both in the boardroom and in the playroom. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Institute of Gender and the Economy, the faculty and fellows, the Bain and company team, and the Rodman School of Management for their invaluable guidance and mentorship. I am also grateful to everyone I interviewed for generously sharing their time and insights with me during the course of this project. Most importantly, I want to express my gratitude to my amazing support system, whose encouragement and support have been crucial in helping me navigate the challenges of this project. In particular, my darling husband, Tola, who continues to be the wind beneath my wing, and my beloved son, Ire, whose birth inspired this project. Thank you.